I lived here, right on this spot, by this lake for most of my life. It's, uh, it's pretty spectacular and, and I love it here. Dad was one of the last full-time trappers in Labrador and my mom was a nurse and she came to work at the local mission to help provide medical support to our community. As an indigenous person, it can be kind of difficult to explain the, the importance of our culture sometimes. But this connection to the land, to the waters, is maintained through generations and generations of hunting, fishing, and gathering. Residential schools have taken away so much from us, our way of life, our pride, our sense of identity. And hunting and fishing, living off the land, was one of the last things that we had that was solid. And now, at the very least, this hydroelectric project is going to cast doubt on this most important way of life. And it's not that we are against industry or we're against development, but this is a project that could have such huge consequences. We just want to see this project done right. Build your dam, but don't poison us. Build your dam, but don't take away our way of life. Build your dam, but don't cast doubt on our food. At every step of the way, from the environmental assessment process to right now when they're bringing in these transformers to install into the dam, every step of the way we have said, no, please don't do this to us. And every step of the way we were told, it's okay, don't worry about it. You know, we're, we're getting to the point now where we're getting desperate. Tensions are rising on both sides. More and more police are being shipped in all the time. People are getting scared. They feel like they're being invaded by a foreign occupying force. We don't see ourselves in this project. We don't see ourselves in this government. We just see destruction. It, it, it's hard to wrap your brain around this. That what I've been told my entire life is the healthiest and best food for me could be killing me. I should not have to be forced to choose by my own provincial government between my spiritual and mental well-being or my physical well-being. That's the situation I'm in. It almost feels hopeless at times, but you have to keep going because what other option do we have? Do we just roll over and die? Give up who we are? Give up our way of life? Give up the way of life of our ancestors and our family? Just so this project can be finished? I, I can't reconcile with that. Don't kill the river What she done to you Let her live, let her breathe, let her be Let her waters flow through Don't kill the river What's it gonna take She's dying, she's suffering, suffocating Every cent that you make this land has built me mm -hmm. to destroy it is it's like the ultimate wrong. This is what's given me life. It's my duty to fight. Mm -hmm. Now, with a little bit of, of, of uh, culture that, that we're really trying to hold on to, and traditional way of life and healthy way of life that we're trying to hold on to, we have a major corporation telling us, just let it go. It's not worth it. It's not, it's, only, it's not worth it to them because it's not going to line their pockets. It's worth more than all the money in the world to me. And that's why I was willing to risk my life last year. Yeah. What do you want to see five years from now, 10 years from now? I want to see you walking down over this bank, coming over and saying, hey, Billy, and I'm still out here in the water fishing. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I want. I want to be able to stand out here, fish away, and if I do hook on to a nice sized fish and I can take it in, it, into shore, I want to know that I can eat it. And I want to know that it's safe enough that I can give it to my family, to my friends. The more they kick us, the stronger we will get. And the more we will expose that they are kicking us. Don't kill the river. What she done to you?
So the water was so high, it lifted this building right up. Yes. Whether it was the water and the ice or a combination both. of both. And I kind of think that the water was really close to his meter box over here. And he had here a patio and it's gone. This is how the water was up. So now because of that, the phone line isn't working. You can see how high it was in here in this room here because you don't have it tore completely behind the bathtub, but that's how high the water was. His fridge, he opened up his fridge and he had water in his fridge. He opened up his oven and water came out. But still take getting used to you to come into these houses that you know so well and see it like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough, it's a tough, tough situation. Yeah. You know, I it's your family's that. house. <laughs> I want to get my leg back. Yeah. I need to get my leg back. Together we'll get her back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna start crying. I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, you don't. Don't cry on camera. You want a hug? Yeah. Here, come here, come here. There. Thank you. I remember one evening here back in October, um, it was like midnight and all of a sudden we um, got word that RCMP were coming for us. And um, I remember all we, all we knew what we could do was, and we know that if there's more of us then we've got a better chance of not being arrested. So we put the call out at midnight on this rainy, crazy night and I, I couldn't believe the amount of people that were just showing up within the half hour. The morning that I sat and blocked traffic and was arrested, I was arrested with nine other people. I knew two of them. Hmm. You know, these were people from Rigolette from all over the place. And I really got to know them, uh, especially in the jail cell, you know. Like, we've made so many connections and such great friendships through all this with Labradorians we, we never would have known otherwise. All of Labrador now are, are uh, you know, together and um, not just in our little little spots of Labrador. You know, we're so um, spread out, but this and um, this fight has certainly brought a lot of us together. It's amazing, and it was an amazing feeling to be in that energy here, looking around at everybody from everywhere, all over Labrador, and to be a part of that was just incredible. Despite all the bad that's happened because of this, I'm awful proud of who we are. Yeah, I know. I could never I couldn't be prouder of how much we've done and how far we've come, you know. And the dedication in those Labradorians that are still fighting and still having hope and still willing to give up all all the extra time that they have, you know, and their family time and everything just to come out here and make a point to let them know that they can't forget us. Yeah. We're still here. Yeah. Protect not destroy. Don't kill the river